Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation on analyzing a fungal mycelium and cheap wood composite for construction. My name is Dana Saez and this research is part of the Mycomatrix project where together with my colleague Dennis Gritzman and Professor Martin Trouts at the Chair for Structures and Structural Design at the Faculty of Architecture at the RWTH Aachen and uh, our partner Dr. Annette Werner from the Technical University of Dresden. Uh, we have been working on the development of mycelium composite matrix products. The Micromatrix project aims to develop a sustainable system of building components on the basis of fungal mycelium. The project started with the first prototype of mycelium brick on wood chip substrate, the microblock, in 2017. After the microblock, this team decided that we should focus future research on the future further optimization of the material properties. Within this project, we focus on three factors that highly influence the physical and mechanical capacity of mycelium-based composite. Fungal mycelium selection, substrate characterization and cultivation parameter optimization. One of the biggest problems in using organic natural materials in construction is their biological imperfection. This paper aims to improve the cultivation process to reach standards applicable to the building industry. In an exploratory stage, four white rod fungi were studied. These fungi decompose and grow exclusively on dead biomass. Another malucidum presented positive conditions to be cultivated under standardized cultivation conditions. The preliminary test showed uniformly high strength values on the test specimens after a short growth phase of two weeks. Also, on an early stage of the project, we plan to analyze two wood types of substrates, beech and spruce. As we can see in the diagram, we conducted an analysis of the substrate mycelium growth ratio and its influence on compression tests. This resulted on the combination of 60% coarse and 40% fine beech wood. One of the project's main goals was to optimize the manufacturing time and the quality of the final test specimens. For that reason, each part of the fabrication process was carefully analyzed, seeking precision. A series of laboratory preconditions as strain maintenance, homogenization, sterilization and inoculation were established by Dr. Annette Berner and her team at Dresden University of Technology. Once the preconditions were established, the substrate was filled into the bags and then autoclaved. They were stored in the incubator for five days at 24 degrees under humid conditions. Until now, all these manufacturing steps were produced at Dr. Bernard's lab in Dresden. After the five-day growth in the bags, they were transported to Aachen. The material was broken up and transferred to the formworks. Different formworks were developed, each one corresponding to different test methodology. The optimal cultivation was uh, four weeks, as shown in the diagram. And finally, in the sixth step, we have denaturation. After the desired growth volume, the specimens are dry at a constant temperature to stop the growing process. In order to determine the influence of the density to growth radio on the compressive strengths, we conducted a series of experiments on specimens with different amount of material, 10, 80, 100, 120%. As shown in the diagram, the higher density influenced positively the compressing strengths in specimens. Also, the cultivation time, as well as the filling density, influence the compression test as shown in the diagram. Compared to the compression strength result, the material's bending strength also shows a dependence on the filling density. This is shown by a higher stiffness and maximum measure force of the test specimens with higher density. Compared to the results of the compression test, the samples of the bending test show 
lower standard deviations. The workability of the material was divided in two groups, mechanical treatment and surface treatment. What stands out during the experiments is that the post-treatments were more successful concerning the mechanical since most of the test specimens started to break while applying some of the described procedures. The most suitable vari variants for mechanical workability were sewing, which caused minor damage to the intervention area, drilling with a small concrete bit diam diameter, and uh, screwing without plugs. The most prominent findings to emerge from this study is that Ganoderma lucidum is potentially one of the most suitable fungi for use in the production of fungal mycelium and cheap wood composites for their application as construction elements. Although its strength is comparatively lower than other fungi, it has the advantage that the surface has a certain degree of water repellency without any post-treatment. However, Fomes fomentarius would be a suitable candidate to produce, to produce more robust specimens. For all species here investigated, the substrate beach was the most suitable for the mycelium-based materials. And last but not least, the mechanical properties determined in the various tests provide initial indication for characterizing the material. Based on these values, possible areas of application can be defined. The results also show that the properties could be improved by optimizing the influencing parameters. Thanks for your attention. I'm glad to hear your feedback on this presentation.